Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to be discussing another video on the Love Your Licensing topic within ITSM standard. Just quickly before we get into things, just to say that everything we'll be talking about and showing today is based on our own knowledge and research of ServiceNow. So as we discussed last time in our video, we've got an overview of all the different capabilities included in ITSM standard. Today, the focus is on our core asset management, which is part of the ITSM licensing. Today, we're going to give you an overview and a couple of demos highlighting how you can use this today. Just to look at this in a little bit more detail is an overview of those core asset management capabilities including asset and model records, managing stock rooms, being able to look at transfer orders and purchase orders, but also having contract management skills and also capabilities specific for the mobile apps. I will be taking us through the first demo today, which will be looking at fulfilling an employee's request. So Emily will go onto the employee center and submit a request for a new laptop. I will then take this through fulfillment, looking at stock rooms, creating transfer orders and getting this all the way through to shipment while looking at a few dashboards as an overview. And in the second demo, I'll walk you through the two different applications that are included in your licensing. We'll start with the Now Agent app where the asset manager is able to identify purchase orders, look up assets and even receive and create a new asset. And in the now mobile application, we'll see how an employee is able to view their own assigned assets and how they can raise a problem with that particular one. Now let's have a look at this in action. I will now begin my IT service management asset demo. So today we're starting in the employee center as one of your employees named Emily. Today, Emily needs to order a new laptop. So she comes into the hardware service catalog and chooses the computer variety. She identifies which computer she'd like to request, in this case the Apple MacBook Pro 15, assigns it to herself and simply presses order now. She can then specify any delivery information and any special handling instructions. For example, if I'm not in, please leave this with my neighbour. And just like that, she can check out. We will then be taken to a request summary and we can also get continual visibility into this request at the top here in my requests. And we can see this individual requested items within this request. So a request can contain many different requested items in it. Say for example, Emily's put a mouse and a keyboard also in her basket. This will still come under this specific request here, just as individual items. And we can also drill down into these individual line items specifically so she can get continual updates into its status and also have a conversation here say if this item seems to be delayed we can have a conversation with the procurement team so she always has updates and understands what's happening now let's view this in the back end of service now So as Emily ordered this from the service catalogue, I want to show you what this looks like in catalogue definitions. So I'm going to search for Apple. And here we can see our Apple MacBook Pro 15. We can see specific information about this, such as which catalogue this is associated to, which specific category this is in but most importantly, the workflow associated with this. In this case, we have the procurement process workflow. And now let's look at this in a bit more detail. So in this procurement process flow, we can see there are seven key stages. The first stage is to begin and then wait for approval, which will take it to the next stage of procurement. If procurement is turned on, it will go straight to fulfillment and awaiting delivery. 
However, if procurement is turned off, we'll first need to source the item, receive the item, configure the item, all the way through to delivery and completion. And these workflows are provided within the base system of ServiceNow. And you can also edit them to make them a better fit for your organizational needs. Now to give you an idea of how assets records are stored within the ServiceNow platform in general, we can go to this asset list. We can search for specific model categories. So in this case, we can search for specific computers, but this could also be hardware or software. And we can see the configuration item MacBook Pro 15. So let's take a look at this asset record. Just to give you an idea of some of the fields within an asset record, we can see model category, the specific model, the asset tag, its current status and who it's assigned to, as well as its serial number and location. Going down here, we have more information such as financial, disposal, depreciation, contracts. And we also have related lists at the bottom. So we can click into this and see the specific contract record associated with it, as well as the individual assets and expense lines. So I hope this gives you a brief idea as how records, asset records are stored within ServiceNow. Now let's go through to fulfilling Emily's request. Okay, so to do this, I'm first going to go to the list of all requests within ServiceNow. I'm then going to search for that specific requested number from Emily to see her open request here. Now, if you remember that workflow, the first stage of the workflow was getting approval. And as I'm the system admin, I can approve on behalf of these two individual people. But in a real life scenario, of course, these would be routed to them to approve and then go through to the next stage. So impersonating Eric, I can go ahead and approve on his behalf, which will automatically generate a catalog task here, which is the third phase of that workflow, which is sourcing the requested items. So I can open up this catalog task and see the short description is to request the items. If I needed to communicate with my team on this, I can post those work notes here and I can go ahead and source this request. Now I have three options for sourcing this. I can get this from a local stock room, which in this case, there's currently zero of these Apple MacBook Pros in the local stock room. I can create a transfer order. So transferring from a different stock room or create a vendor purchase. In this case, I'm going to create a transfer order. So I can select the stock room I'd like to transfer this from. In this case, I can see there's most stock in the Southern California warehouse. I want to transfer only one and I want this to go to my destination. And I simply submit this. And now my transfer order line has been successfully created. And I can view it here within the transfer orders tab. And we can see this is currently in the first stage. So let's click into this and see it in more detail. Now I can see there's specific transfer order lines tasks here. And the first one is to be ready for fulfillment. So let's drill down into this and imagine I do the tasks needed to prepare this for fulfillment. So I can go ahead and close this task here at the top. And this will automatically generate a new task, which is to prepare for shipment. And once again, I prepared for shipment so I can go ahead and close this task which has generated the next task, which is actually to ship the item. Now we can say shipping has been complete and we can also see we can track the number, ship date and what the vendor is here at the bottom and go ahead and close this task, taking us through to receiving this. We can confirm that we've received the item and once again close the task, which will take us to the final task, which is to actually deliver this. And once again, you can specify this item has successfully been delivered and close the task once again. And we can see 
all of these tasks are now in the state close complete. And we can go back to our original request form and see that this has now been completed and we can go back to our requested item. However, when we look at the stage of the requested item, we can see it's not fully completed here. We're still pending the item actually arriving at Emily's door. So let's drill down into this and we can see there's one more catalogue task for us to complete, which has been assigned to field services to deliver to the customer. Now we can post comments here to Emily or we can post comments here to our team, letting them know what's going on. And once again, imagine this has been delivered to Emily's door now, she's received the item, we can go ahead and close this task. And when we go back on our requested form, we can see all the stages are now green and our shipment has been completed. If we go back to Emily's employee center, and have a look at this from her point of view, we can see the stage of her delivery is also completed from her view as well. I also wanted to mention that although we've touched on things like catalog tasks, stock rooms and transfer orders from within this requested view, you can also access this information individually, such as being able to see the list of all the stock rooms as their own separate thing and seeing the assets associated with them individually. You can also view purchase orders separately and view information like their financial value when they're up for renewal and the specific terms and conditions associated with them and things like transfer orders. Now there are also two dashboards that come with IT asset management being the procurement overview dashboard, where you can see requests that require sourcing, you can see expenditure by vendors, orders specifically by vendors, and purchase orders that are pending delivery, and this is what they look like out of the box. You also have asset contract overview dashboard as well. So you can see any expiring contracts that might be coming up really soon, such as anyone's coming up at the end of this week, at the end of this month or quarter. So I hope this has given a good overview into IT service management, asset capabilities. Now we're going to have a look at the mobile applications that are included with core asset management in your ITSM licensing. As mentioned before, we're going to have a look at two applications, starting with the mobile agent app and then moving on to the now mobile app for employees. So here is our mobile agent application, particular personas who might use this for an asset point of view as the asset manager, stockroom manager, or even the asset owner. Today, we are the IT asset manager who is logged into the agent app. And first of all, just to give you a bit of an overview of what they can see. The asset manager has the ability to see the stockroom audits, the location audits, they can create assets, and they can even look up assets as well, all within the application. And it's important to say here that this is configurable to what the asset manager wants to see. Scrolling down, we can also see any open stockroom audits. And here there is one which is in progress. Of course, we can see a high level view at face value, but clicking in, the asset manager is able to see some more information. For example, they can see the particular location of the audit, as well as who it has been assigned to. They can see that 13 assets have scanned and been expected, whereas perhaps 12 are expected but have not been found. And as well as this, they also have the activity stream to communicate with people who are working on this particular audit. The activity stream allows the asset manager to leave notes or they can see changes like who this audit has been assigned to. The next thing we'll have a look at are the purchase orders. And for that, we go into the procurement tab on the application. Now here, the asset manager is able to see a high level overview of the purchase orders in the next 30 days. We can see some different ones listed here, but just simply opening up the first one, 
we can are taken to the details tab, which gives us an overview of perhaps the description, who it's assigned to, the shipping of it, as well as when it was requested and ordered. Again, we have the activity stream displayed here, but importantly, we have the related lists, and this breaks down those PO line items. Of course, here we can see there's two particular line items for this purchase order, and just opening up the first one again, we can see the details of it with the order quantity as well as the cost amounts. Now, if the asset manager wants to say that this has actually been received, they can either come up to the three dots at the top and notify as received, or going back to that line item page, they can just swipe across and select the receive button. Now, this will either trigger them to scan the asset tag or the serial number on a barcode, or they can just simply manually enter that information. Once that is submitted, the asset manager will be able to review a notification which registers that particular order as being received. Now, the next thing we want to have a look at returning to our asset tab is the asset lookup. Now, if more information of an asset is needed, the asset manager is able to look up that particular asset. Now, for this, the asset can either be scanned again, or we just simply manually enter the asset tag. Now, once that has been submitted, it will give you a list or a particular item that is associated with the asset tag that you have entered. Of course, as with anything we've seen, the asset manager can open this up and see more of the intricate details listed. Now, importantly here, we can see, of course, that the Apple iMac is assigned to Emily. We can see the location of it, but also the status of it. So if it's in use or perhaps it's broken or perhaps it's being fixed. And finally, the last thing to show is how to create an asset. Now, again, we return to that asset page and we use the create asset icon. Just like other areas we've seen in the demo, you can enter the serial number and the asset tag, asset tag, sorry, or just simply scan it. Once the asset is submitted, you can go ahead and also add more information like the model, the state, so whether it's in stock, in transit, or perhaps it's missing and then also which stockroom this particular asset is allocated to, which just means that all information is in one place within the instance. Now that's an overview of our now agent app, which the asset manager is able to use. Let's go and have a look at the now mobile application. Now, a few of you might be familiar with this because it is often used by employees um, to be able to find the latest company news. They can raise requests or incidents, but also utilize knowledge articles within knowledge base. But of course, keeping with the theme, today the employee can scroll down and have a look at their particular assets. Now this is listed within the My Items section and we, here we can see the My Assets tab. Now, when this opens up, an employee is able to see the particular hardware or software assets that are allocated to them and that they are using. So here we can see there's three particular assets that are in use for this employee. Of course, if they were having being fixed or if they're being sent, then the status would reflect that as well. But if we open up that Apple iMac, they can see the asset tag and serial number, which we were able to see how that can also be scanned and represented in the Now Agent app but we, they can also see the display name as well. Now, perhaps the employer is having issues with this particular asset, which is the Apple iMac. Now, from here, it's really easy for them to report an issue. The urgency is obviously predefined and a short description can be added. Once this incident has been created and submitted, this will notify the asset management team to be able to sort the issue or to go through the procurement process we saw earlier of getting them out a new iMac. Now that brings us to the end of our demonstration of the applications. Moving back to our slide and wrapping up what we've seen today. Now, of course, we focused on the asset area of your ITSM licensing and the capabilities included. With the email that attached the video link, there is also a link to our survey. If you wouldn't mind filling this out and giving us some information on what videos you would like to see next. 
Thank you very much and we'll speak to you soon.